Wages and Profits, a basic Neocolestian model, adapted from Asimokopoulos, 1975. This provides a foundation for analysing distribution between profits and wages and its effect on the large economy. I'm going to focus on income distribution's effect on total output. In a later video, I will look at income distribution's effect on growth. We'll begin by modelling pricing behaviour of oligopolistic firms. We model this using marker pricing. Next, we will aggregate these results to model the behaviour of the whole economy. As the name suggests, marker pricing means that capitalists price their goods based on a set markup on the cost of production. This markup is stable and remains relatively unchanged when inputs and labour costs fluctuate. Let's look at an example to see how this works. Here we are going to look at an economy made up of identical farms. Each farm grows only one crop, corn. This is consumed as food and used for investment as seed. Labour is the only input needed for production, so the only cost of production is wages. The average amount of corn one worker produces each week, A, is 10 kilograms. Each week, each worker is paid 10 coins as a wage. To find the cost of producing 1 kilogram of corn, we take the wage rate and divide it by labour productivity. So, 10 coins per week divided by 10 kilograms per week gives 1 coin per kilo. Then, to find the price of 1 kilogram of corn, we multiply this by 1 plus the markup move. Let us say that farmers charge 50% above input costs. This gives that each kilogram of corn is sold to consumers for 1.5 coins. To find the wage and profit share of income in the economy, we must first find the output of the economy. Imagine in this economy we have three farms, each employing five workers. So the total number of workers, L, is 15. To get the total output of the economy in monetary value, we take the average labour productivity times the number of workers times the price of each good. So we say output y is equal to 10 kilograms per week per worker times 15 workers times 15 coins per kilogram gives 225 coins per week. Now we want to determine what share of output goes to wages and what share goes to profits. Assume that in a closed economy with no government, all money goes either to profits, pi, or wages, capital W. Then we can calculate the total value of wages by multiplying the number of workers by the wage rate. 15 workers times 10 coins per week gives 150 coins. We can find profits by subtracting the total wage bill from total income, which gives 75 coins per week. However, given this wage and profit structure, this economy may be producing too much or too little to meet the total demand. So, capitalists will then adjust the number of employees. To check, we must find aggregate demand in the economy. This consists of two components, consumption, C, and investment, I. We are only interested in planned investment here. If capitalists are unable to sell all their goods to consumers, they will have to build up inventories. This is sometimes called forced investment and is not included in this term. To find consumption, we assume that workers spend all their wages on consumption. Next. We estimate how much capitalists spend on consumption. We assume that capitalists consume some constant real amount of goods, capital A, plus some amount of goods proportional to total profits, lambda pi. Let's say the constant amount is 8 kilograms of corn each, or 24 kilograms in total, and that an additional 10% of the profit share is spent on consumption. So 10% times 75 gives us 7.5 coins extra consumption from the capitalists. 
This gives total consumption of 150 plus 36 plus 7.5 equals 193.5 coins. Next, we must find investment. In this simple model, we take planned investment as given, based on capitalists' expectation of the future and the state of their access to credit. Although the profit share may also affect investment, for simplicity, we are not going to include that into this model. We will look more closely at the interactions between distribution and investment in a later video on wage versus profit-led growth. Thus, we will take investment as set, independent of current income distribution for now. Total demand in the economy, D, is given by consumption plus investment. The economy is only in a stable equilibrium if demand is equal to output. If demand is greater than output, capitalists will decrease their inventories below the desired level, so capitalists will increase employment in the next week. If output is greater than demand, capitalists will increase inventories beyond their desired level, so they will decrease employment in the next week. Unfortunately, the difference between consumption, inventory accumulation and investment is a little confusing when using only one good. We can also look at the conditions for equilibrium another way, by noting that demand is equal to output when planned investment is equal to savings. And we can find savings in an economy by subtracting consumption from output. 225 coins minus 193.5 coins equals 31.5 coins. So if investment is greater than 31.5, employment will expand in the next week. And if it is less than 31.5, employment will decrease. In this model, we see that a greater wage share increases the probability that the stable equilibrium of the economy is at higher levels of employment, because workers spend almost all wages on consumption, whereas capitalists save a large portion of profits, and this only results in a high employment equilibrium if capitalists decide to invest a large amount.